Dr. Manas Babu. He's a consultant urologist in Preeti Urology and Kidney Hospital, Hyderabad. He's working with Dr. Chandra Mohan. Uh, he has more than 10 presentations in national and zonal state conferences, and he was awarded a gold medal for outstanding performance in his post-graduation in South Zone Urological Association in 2017. Dr. Manos. Thanks, uh, sir, for a wonderful introduction. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, my guru, Dr. Chandra Mohan, sir, for, and uh, Anil, sir, for giving this opportunity. Uh, Till now, you have all witnessed in the last couple of hours, you have all witnessed about the wonderful craftsmanship of uh, various aspects of the RIRS by our eminent panelists. My job now is only to brief you all about only the practical aspects of the reprocessing and the sterilization of a flexible scope. Uh, RIRS is being used more frequently for the renal stones over the past decade. Sepsis is a major concern. Unfortunately, antibiotics are not the answer always. Uh, according to Spalding's classification, all our flexible scopes have been classified as a semi-critical devices, which require either the sterilization or the high-level disinfection. As you all know, sterilization is a discussion for all the microorganisms, including the spores, where a disinfection destroys most pathogenic microbes, but not all. Uh, for sterilization of the flexible scopes, Low temperature sterilization is best at present for the flexible scopes. Is sterilization necessary always? Or is it possible to do the sterilization after, even after every case? No. Are there any alternatives? Yes. There is one alternative called high-level disinfection. What is this high-level disinfection? Nothing but a chemical disinfection. Though it's a disinfection, given the adequate time, these chemicals can act as a, act as a sterilization also. What are the recommended chemicals uh, for the high level disinfection? Commonly are the aldehyde groups, mainly glutaraldehyde. And other chemicals like parasitic acid, sodium, hypochlorite are also used. Manual cleaning is more important before any disinfection using. Our flexible ureteroscope working channels are the narrowest channels when compared to all other flexible scopes like gastroscopes, endoscopes. And the cleaning of these narrow channels is of paramount importance to avoid the sepsis. And uh, reprocessing of the flexible scopes have been defined into eight different categories. And I will show you the brief videos about the each uh, step. First is the pre-cleaning. This begins as soon as the scope comes out of the patient body. Main aim is to make the scope less contaminant for the further handling. Commonly used is either water or the uh, enzymatic solutions can be used to clean the scopes. After the cleaning of the scope, main aim is to check whether the scope is uh, leak proof or not. These are the two scenarios in which first one is a leak test positive where the scope is not able to maintain the pressures. Whereas in the second scenario, the scope is able to maintain the pressure, means the scope is good. Well, in the first case, the scope has a leakage in the flexible channel. Confirm this when you are water, we can see the air bubble damage because of the laser fiber induced damage. Once the scope is leak test positive, then scope goes for directly for manufacture for the repair. When the scope test is negative, then we take the scope for further cleaning. In this, in this cleaning, mainly the scope is cleaned both interior and exterior with the enzymatic solutions, whether using a 10 ml or 50, uh, 20 ml syringe, thoroughly flushed so that all the debris blood inside the channel should be washed out. During the cleaning, there are also uh, manufacturers provide the various shapes and sizes of size brushes to clean all the valves and the channels. And this is also important uh, to clean all those channels before going for the disinfection. After the cleaning, all the residual debris should be washed out in the process called rinsing. In this rinsing, we commonly use deiodized water, distilled water, or the tap waters. And the special care should be taken to clean the eyepiece and the distal lens. Commonly, we use the 70% isopropyl alcohol, either the disposable uh, swabs or the wipes are available. And the disinfection, this is the heart of the main heart of the dis high level disinfection program. Uh, whatever the disinfection you use, 
most important thing is you have to make sure that your scope is fully immersed inside the scope for the adequate prescribed contact time. Once the scope is been immersed in the distill, uh, disinfectant for the adequate time, the scope is rinsed of all the chemicals by commonly only the deionized water or the distilled water only should be used. Then comes the drying of the scope. The main aim of this drying of the scope is to make sure that all the water content or the chemicals inside the channels should be dried. This can be helped by using the special type of air guns and also using the 5 to 10 ml of 70% isopropyl alcohol can be pushed into the channel so that the drying process can be improved. After the drying, the scope should be placed in the manufacturer provided uh, packages or it can be hanged safely in the containers so that the drying process is improved. Uh, since the manual cleaning has the human errors, to abandon those human errors, company, various companies have come up with automated endoscope process, reprocessors. These are nothing like our wash, washing machines or the dishwashers. Just we have to place these uh, scopes, used scopes after pre cleaning into these containers after the pre required connections. The, uh, by the touch of a button, the process, these automated processors cleans the scopes. Uh, makes them easy and ready for the next cases. And uh, sterilization, uh, the most common is a low temperature sterilization technique. There are various types of techniques are available. The first and foremost introduced was the ethylene oxide, ETO. Then came the gas plasma vaporized hydrogen peroxide sterilization system, mainly called as sterad. Vaporized hydrogen peroxide system, Steris V Pro Max. And the latest uh, new kit on the block is the vaporized hydrogen peroxide with the ozone, manufactured as sterizone. What's the main common difference between the ethylene oxide and the hydrogen peroxide? Ethylene oxide is uh, commonly is a toxic and it is a carcinogenic and the cycle time it takes about 8 to 10 hours. And uh, the ethylene oxide is also inflammable and is not environment friendly. Whereas hydrogen peroxide systems are non-toxic and the cycle time is very less. Within one hour, the scopes will be ready for reuse. And the environmental friendly, simple to operate, and are compatible with most of the medical devices and the materials. In our institute, we use this Sterad 100S system. After, since last one year, we have been using. After you started using this Sterad system, we could see that gradual decrease in our infection rates. To conclude, Flexible electroscopes are delicate and costly. Sepsis is a major complication of RIRS. Proper handling not only prevents the cost, but also avoids injury to the patient. Manual cleaning is most essential component. Liquid disinfection is commonly used in India. Expiry and efficacy of all these liquids should be monitored on a daily basis. Steroid-like systems are highly efficient and suitable for the institutions. Thank you. Thank you, Manas.